Hey guys, it's Benjamin with Benjamin's Exotics, and in today's video, we're going to talk about managing live feeder allergies, talking about the allergies that you might get as a keeper from both keeping and breeding live feeder rodents and live feeder insects for your reptiles and amphibians. Right. So today we're going to be talking about basically live feeder allergies and some of the problems that you as a keeper can have with uh, breeding your own live foods. Now we're talking about and we're dealing with of course reptiles and amphibians so things like snakes, lizards, frogs, toads, salamanders, many of these species and different types of animals are going to require live food. There are some reptiles like tortoises and even some lizards will take a pre-made diet like uh, leopard or um, crested geckos and some skinks will take a pre-made like dog food diet or something like that. But for many of your species, especially more particular species like ball pythons, especially things like amphibians that require live food to survive and will not accept like a pre-killed insect, you are going to need to either source your own food live locally or what lots of people do is actually breed their own feeders and there are so many benefits to breeding your own feeders of course cost they're going to be less expensive you actually know what is going into your feeder so you nutritionally know how good your feeder is going to be for your animals and there's a bunch of other benefits as well but when you do go to breed your own feeders we have to keep in mind that there is one big thing and one big negative to doing so that you kind of have to manage and that is actually going to be allergies now when we're talking about feeders most of the time it's not an actually an allergy to the feeder itself so it's not really an allergy to the mouse or rat and if you hold a mouse or rat you're probably not going to start sneezing or anything like that and it's not normally an an allergy to your feeder insect, so it's not an allergy to touching a mealworm, which these are actually mealworm beetles that we're breeding. It's not, if I touch these, I'm not going to get an allergic reaction. It's actually an allergic reaction to the feces that these animals produce. So for insects, we're going to call the feces frass because that is the right term for insect uh, fecal matter and waste. And for a rodent, we're kind of getting this uh, fecal pellet, essentially. It's very similar to, you know, it's just mammal feces, but it's going to be in a pellet form. So when we talk about allergies for these feeder uh, prey items, so insects and rodents, one of the interesting things is is, is that it, it doesn't seem to be something where it just, it, it doesn't seem to be apparent very quickly whether or not you're going to develop an allergy to your feeders, and it actually is just that, developing an allergy. So you might get mealworms, like these guys, or rodents, and you might keep them for six months, a year, I've even heard up to three years, and you won't have any problems. No sneezing, no red face, no getting sick after you breathe in their fecal matter, their frag whatever, no, um, you won't have any negative effects. But then, a year down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road, you get deathly sick, okay? Because your body has just been taking the brunt of all of these um, allergen, all of these, you know, allergens that are going to be the particles that come from the fecal matter. And people have literally gotten so sick before that they have to get out of keeping reptiles and amphibians because they can't deal with the live foods anymore. So when we are talking about breeding your own feeders, it's a very good thing. You can do it. And of course, I've done it for the past six or eight, actually six, seven, coming up on eight years both breeding on and off rodents, and of course, I'm always breeding things like insects, but you have to do this responsibly. You have to do this in a way that you are not going to get really bad allergies, because if it would be the worst thing in the world if you developed, you know, this huge ball python collection, which I'm not saying this is a huge collection by any means, but you know, you develop a ball python collection or a leopard gecko collection, and you have all these wonderful animals, and now, because you've made some simple mistakes that can be easily fixed, you have to actually get rid of your animals because your body just can't take the uh, allergens that are being produced by your feeders. So let's first look at rodents. So if I'm keeping a rodent, rodent fecal pellets, as you can see, are not nearly as 
um, they're not going to become airborne nearly as easily as insect frass. Insect frass is very dusty, it's, it's very fine particles, and all you have to do is just stir it up a little bit and all those particles are going to enter the air. With rodents, it's not as bad as insects, which is why people are normally, they become allergic to mealworms far quicker, quicker than they are to something like a mouse or a rat, but Still, as the mice and the rats move around in this enclosure, as they dig through the bedding, as they build their nest, you are going to have some of these fecal particles become airborne. So, some great tips is you want to try to keep your feeders out of the bedroom as much as possible. You don't want to be breeding your mealworms or your mice, rats in your bedroom too much, and it does have to do with scale as well. So if I have just two of these cages, two, maybe even three small mouse cages in my bedroom, that might be fine. Or if I have one or two mealworm tubs in a bedroom and I'm not cleaning the tub, obviously, in the bedroom, that might be fine. It gets to the point where you have 10, 20, 30, 100 mealworm cultures or you're breeding hundreds of rodents that it starts to become a little bit of a problem. So keep your feeders as much as possible out of the bedroom, especially if you have large numbers and also when we're cleaning these guys. One of the biggest and most common ways that the frass or the feces, the, fe the fecal particles are going to enter the air and be breathed in by yourself, you know, the keeper, is through cleaning or when you're dealing with insects like mealworms, actually we will sift through the bedding to extract the mealworms from the beetle culture. So, when we're doing this, we wanna be doing this either in a highly ventilated place, so maybe like a garage where you have a big door on the front that you can just swing open, or a big living space that can easily be ventilated, you can open the windows wherever, or even better, when you can, clean your enclosures outside. Now I understand that sometimes if you are in 110 degree heat or you're in negative 30 degree temperatures, you know, there are going to be some times where you can't clean your feeder insects outside. However, when possible, I highly recommend cleaning especially your feeder insects outside and also when you can, when it's possible for your rodents. Again, rodent allergies are not nearly as big of a problem as insect allergies, but with rodents, it just, it get, once you have hundreds of rodents in a very small room like this, that's where you start to have problems with these guys and for your insects, it's more of a problem of where do you clean your insect bins. And by doing just these simple things, cleaning your feeders outside, trying to keep your exposure to their fecal matter or their frass, to a minimum, trying to not get exposed to their waste products too much, gives you the best chance of not actually developing the allergy at all. But let's say that you're like myself and you didn't know this, because I'll be honest, for the first uh, three or four years of breeding mealworms, all the things I just said, I did. I had all my mealworms in the place where I slept, I would just uh, clean them inside, I would sift through them inside, and I was miserable. And I just thought it was, you know, normal allergies. And come to find out, as things got worse and worse, I did some research and found out that I was probably becoming allergic to mealworms. And even to this day, if I was to stick my hand in here and really start cleaning and going through this bin, I'm gonna start to sneeze, my face is gonna become red, and for probably the next two or three hours, I'm gonna feel pretty out of it and really not feel that good. So, if you do get to the point, or if you are to the point where you are slightly allergic or even very allergic to your feeder insects or feeder rodents, all hope is not lost. I know many people that are very allergic to mealworms or doobie roaches and stuff like that, and they still manage hundreds of leopard geckos or other species because they enjoy them so much. If you are allergic to some sort of feeder for your animals, there are some things you can do. So of course, do the things that we already talked about. No feeders in the bedroom, no feeders in any area like a living room where you're going to be spending a lot of just kind of lounge and rest time. And when you are going to clean your feeders, do it outside. All those things are your biggest measures. However, you can even go a step further. If you are getting to the point where you are sneezing a lot, coughing a lot, watery eyes and stuff like that, go out and get a mask. Get, you know, just a, either a mask you can wash or a mask that is disposable that will cover and protect both your eyes and your nose so you're not breathing in insect frass or you're not breathing in the particles from your rodents, 
okay? That's a one very good way you can do it. Also, even going even further, you can get something like scrubs. So you have like your uh, basically nurse scrubs that you would use if you were in a hospital. Get some of those so you make sure that you're not getting any of this stuff on your skin. And after you clean out, your insects, after you clean out your rodents, don't then just go to bed and don't wear those clothes uh, back into you know your facility, back into your house, wherever you're keeping your feeders. Anytime that I clean mealworms, anytime that I clean a bunch of rodents at one time, I'm gonna wear one t-shirt, one pants, one shorts, whatever I'm wearing, and then I'm gonna put those in the wash and put something else new on before I go to bed. If you are going through and you're cleaning out your feeders, you're cleaning out, again, insects, rodents, whatever, and then you go straight into your bed, you're essentially bringing all of those particles, all of that frass, any sort of waste particles from your rodents, and now, you're essentially putting them in your bed. And as you breathe those in all night long, it's just as bad as if, as if you were, you know, cleaning your rodents or your insects inside. So again, these are just some very basic measures. And you can even do your own research online about how to manage allergies effectively. And I know lots of this stuff just because I deal with, you know, flower allergies. I'm allergic to basically everything, dust, grass, whatever, you name it. So I've kind of just been doing these things for years, but, Keep this in mind, go out, do your own research. So hope you guys did benefit and really get something out of this video. And I wanna be just crystal clear, I know I've already said this, but this video was not created to try to discourage people from breeding their own feeder rodents, feeder insects, and stuff like that. Actually, on the opposite, I really encourage people to do that. And it's just like we talked about at the beginning of the video, there are so many benefits to doing so. I just did this video to kind of bring up a point that isn't talked about a lot in the reptile community and hopefully somebody out there has been helped from this video and they're going to negate and not have to experience some of the negative side effects of live feeder allergies in the future because of this video. I will probably be doing a follow-up video to this because this is such a broad topic and there's so much to talk about. So I really recommend you guys to leave your questions down in the comment section below so I know what I need to talk about in the next videos following up to this. And of course, if you guys have had any experiences of your own dealing with feeder allergies, talking about rodents and insects, please leave your experiences down in the comment section below so I can also learn for myself and that everybody else watching this video that has interest in this topic can see your experience down below. If you guys did like today's video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.